All right, you guys, we actually have a, uh, a new fruit that I haven't had a whole lot of experience with that I want to review for you guys today. And I know it's a little tough to tell what we're looking at here, but back along the fence are actually some grapevines. And these are muscadine grapes that are ripe. Now that it's, um, it's October, I'm getting ripe clusters of muscadine grapes. They're really a fall grape here in the north. And uh, typically they're grown in the south, so they're really a, uh, a great choice down there because they're so disease resistant. And this area actually back here in the corner of this of my yard here doesn't get a whole lot of sun. You know, I have um, the morning sun that rises over here and then it goes up above these shade trees and it really doesn't, really this area back here, it doesn't get a whole lot of sun until maybe, you know, five o'clock in the afternoon. It's really a lack of light back here. And I have also, what's even shading these vines back here are my apple trees. Although they're dwarf, they actually are quite tall. And then also I have my European grapevines on my right. And just really, you could tell, <clears throat> excuse me guys, in this corner back here, we really struggle with disease. Not only do we struggle with light, but we struggle with disease. And a lot of that has to do with the lack of light. But things like my apples, you know, they're, they're almost vacant of leaves at this point of the year. And that's really because of the cedar apple rust. You know, uh, they get the rust on it and then if the leaves don't dry quick enough, uh, because there's a lack of light, then the, the disease gets um, really just out of control and actually can defoliate most of your trees. Um, so my apples back here kind of struggle for a number of reasons, but Mainly it's the disease. And then also the European grapes, they have something called um, black rot. And the black rot pretty much defoliates them and really infects the fruits if I don't bag the fruits with wax paper bags. Um, so the muscadine grape is completely disease free. Even in this low light environment, even in this low light environment, it's producing fruit. I mean, these vines are very young. We have some spotted lantern flies on them. Uh, I'm just shocked that they're even producing. I have both varieties here, Lane and Triumph, that are producing fruits. Uh, and I planted them not this past spring, but the spring prior. So now they've been in the ground. This is their second season from pretty small plants. And I'm, over, I'm overly uh, impressed by them, really. Uh, you could tell that they just belong here. You know, I have all the different fruit trees, fruiting plants I grow, some of them just seem like they really thrive in this environment. Others don't, you know. Um, so the muscadine grape for me, in that sense, is really a keeper. But the problem is that <clears throat> they're not very hardy. And uh, I was sort of discouraged from even trying to grow muscadine grapes here in the north. I'm in the Philadelphia area. It's zone 7A, and we get to zero degrees Fahrenheit every year. And in all honesty, these guys do, uh, so far, at least the one winter they've been through, they have survived. It has been quite mild, um, but I have read from other hobbyists, other growers, that uh, Lane and Triumph both have survived negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a really great sign. Um, if that's true, that's accurate, that means I can grow muscadine grapes way up north, and a lot of you guys can probably even most of you in, in like a 6B, and I guess you could even try it in a 6A. Um, so <clears throat> we're not limited to the European grapes or even some of the American grape varieties here. Um, you know, we're basically got a lot more of diversity that we can grow, which is nice because as a backyard grower, we have the gooseberry, which the gooseberry I would consider very similar to the muscadine grape, and also the European grape. They, um, <clears throat> it is a similar fruit, obviously quite different, but you could say that the gooseberry is an early grape, which ripens sometime in uh, early July. Then I have my European grapes, which will start ripening sometime in August. And then I have my muscadine grapes, which are a fall grape, which will ripen either at the end of September or the beginning or mid-October. Uh, which isn't necessarily a whole lot of time for them because our first frost is November 1st. But it just goes to show you that you can pretty much have grapes 
for a large majority of the season if you plant all three of those, which I think is great. You know, it's not enough to just plant a bunch of different varieties of, let's say, European grapes. We could also plant different species and have kind of a really extended harvest of grapes for people who really like them. Um, so I picked uh, <clears throat> one of the berries here. Um, there's not a whole lot of fruit on these guys. And I, you know, the reason is just that they're young. Um, I do expect them to really fill in next year. We haven't even really set up their trellis totally because some of these vines really should go up above, higher up, and really like on this fence so that they're getting more light, better airflow, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, really just about the photosynthesis, but overall, I'm, I, like I said, I'm quite impressed by the production and the performance. Here are the, um, the grapes here, guys. They're actually quite large, so you may have, you're gonna see smaller clusters on your muscadine grapes, but the, the grape itself is usually quite significant in size. Um, and that's kind of just normal for them. You know, they're not gonna produce huge clusters, but they'll produce many clusters. And uh, usually the grapes are larger in size they're quite seedy as well. Let me, let me try one and show you guys what I'm, what I'm getting here. So very sweet and almost a, um, a conquered grape flavor. The skin has a nice flavor to it. And what you notice right away when you bite into these things is that the pulp comes loose of the skin. So you can pretty much have two different eating experiences, I find, in your mouth. It's kind of like a slip skin variety of grape where I'm chewing on the skin, which has different flavors, maybe a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit of acidity. You know, hints of that little bit of like wild muscadine flavor. And then of course you have the pulp, which is by itself quite sweet, more like that conquered grape flavor, very grapey. It has a weird texture to it, guys. There's also a couple seeds and you don't wanna eat the seeds. So you spit out the seeds, you kinda of get this like, it's like a gel. It's almost like the inside. I don't know how to describe it exactly. It's kind of like something I've eaten before, like almost like a gummy candy. It's almost like a gummy worm. And inside the gummy worm is a couple seeds and it's sweet and it's good. And um, yeah, that's kind of, I think the best way to describe it is that it's not really like a crisp grape that you would think of. You really chew on this thing and mull over it for a while you know um i don't think you could really eat these all that quickly i guess you could but you'd probably be eating the seeds and you don't want to eat too many of those seeds if uh if you can avoid it it's a very good piece of fruit i would say they're better than the gooseberry, but not as good as the European grape. But it's not like it's like so far away. Now, there's two different types because there's the black types here, which we just looked at. I just showed you guys. And there's also these bronze ones. And this bronze one here, is this the lane or the triumph? I'm not sure. I'll have to find my, oh, here's my tag. So Triumph is the black one and Lane is the, uh, the green or bronze variety. So far, um, so far Lane doesn't have a whole lot of fruit on it. I just noticed a ton of ants on the vine over there. And I wonder if the spotted lanternflies are doing something to the tree or to the vine and the ants are kind of going after it. I'll have to look at that when I'm done, but 
Here are some of the bronze types here, guys. And these are said to have a very different flavor. Well, I think that's accurate. We're gonna find out right now. So these are really the two main types. I think there's also red, there's red types, if I'm not mistaken. There's black types and there's these bronze types. And they've been really breeding these. I know Ison's Nursery, if you're interested, has kind of really put a lot of time and energy into these muscadine grapes and breeding them. And also some of them need pollinators, guys. I totally forgot about that. Um, I can't remember, but I think these two are both self-pollinating in that they do not require a male. Um, I believe that's correct, because I don't have a male here on the property and they have both set fruit. Um, but most of these vines, I think, actually do require a male. So the fact that these are both very quite, they're quite hardy um, and also don't require a male is kind of the really the two important things I look for before I looked for the flavor. And I'm sure there's probably better tasting muscadines, but let's try these. I've never had these before. So not as ripe. The skin on that one has a lot of acidity. Still quite sweet, but you know, I think these guys really will develop more flavor as they ripen. The longer they hang on the vine, for sure, the more flavor they're gonna get. Um, it tastes more like a green grape to me, you know? Like a green table grape. It has more of that green flavor to it. Maybe it's more of a muscadine flavor. That one had four seeds in it. I don't know what to think of that one. I think people actually like the bronze ones more than they like the black ones. Um, I don't know, it'd be interesting, interested to see like a poll, how many people like the black ones, how many people like the bronze ones. But I know for sure that they're not ripe just yet. Also, these, these vines are young, so like, Comparing the flavor between them is kind of really not the best idea, but I did want to show you the vines. I wanted to show you the fruits, introduce this fruit to you guys in case you've never heard of it, um, and also recommend it because I think it's really worth growing, especially even in my zone seven, uh, a colder zone seven, by the way. And uh, it seems like nothing really bothers them. Now, I'm surprised that the squirrels aren't going after the fruits. If we had birds, I imagine the birds would be getting the fruits. But there's ants, and even there's ants here on top of the, uh, the European grapevines. And I wonder if they're doing, if something's going on over here. It looks like some kind of sap that they're getting after. Uh, but now that there's a spotted lanternfly, they love grapes. Muscadine grapes are not excluded from that. And it could just become an issue here of battling these musk, these uh, spotted lanternflies. We'll have to see how this all works out, how it goes in the future. Otherwise, it's as it stands right now, I would recommend growing any of these grapes, actually. The gooseberry, the European grape, and the muscadine grape. The European grape, you just have to bag the fruits and you don't get any disease. Um, but are these spotted lanternflies gonna become a big issue? I don't know, we'll have to find out. So, all right guys. Thank you so much. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite muscadine variety is, for what reason. If you like the black ones, the bronze ones, whatever the deal is, let me know. Hit that subscribe button, guys. We'll see you soon, all right? Take care.